Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to look at tensor processing units. This is a Google proprietary alternative to GPUs, and we're going to see how we can use it with Keras and other platforms to increase our processing speed. So tensor processing units, you typically don't buy one of these and put it into a machine. It's a cloud resource. So you're going to be using it either on GCP, Google's own cloud platform, or in Colab. They do make TPUs available for free in Colab. I don't focus a lot on TPUs in this course or the book because it is a proprietary technology, though so is CUDA as well. But CUDA is available, NVIDIA's product, across all the major cloud providers. I can put it inside of my computer. It's about as open as you can get there in terms of hardware for, for deep learning products. My opinion, some of you may disagree. Let me know in the comments if you if you do, if you think I should focus more on TPUs. But let's take a look at TPUs. I have this notebook all prepared. Let's go ahead and open it in Colab because I don't have a TPU on this computer. Obviously, it's a Mac. I don't even have a GPU in the traditional sense. So it's important in Colab to make sure that your runtime type, that you do have it set up so that you're going to use TPU. Otherwise, you're not going to have access to the TPU. So some of this code up front is important. You want to, you'll probably want to connect a G drive so that you are actually using persistent storage because you're going to probably be using images or some other data that you have stored there. This bit of code here is very important as well. TPUs require a bit more care in feeding than GPU. To make use of GPUs in relatively simple to moderate uses in Keras, it just happens automatically. If, if you have the GPU set up and Keras is detecting it, it's, it's just going to use it. And you don't have to modify your code greatly to make use of the GPU. TPUs are a little more involved. They require that the data that the TPU is going to make use of be stored in some sort of Google compatible cloud storage. You have this in Colab and this code right here gets gets you access to that. You need to make sure that you run this. Otherwise, you're going to likely get this error. And if you are getting this area, I suggest restarting your environment and and proceeding again. If you continue to get it, if you're in Colab, that shouldn't really happen. Famous last words. Google it if you're getting this error in Colab. But generally, the suggestion is to run this. Now, if you're running into this in Google Cloud, you are probably not authenticating to where your where your data is stored. So we're going to use the paper clips data set that I showed you before. You're counting paper clips. This is a data set that I created for my class a few years ago for a Kaggle assignment. This code simply downloads it. We download it from this location that I have it stored at. It's a zip file and it's a bunch of JPEGs. Then we extract it and create create a data frame around it. I create this additional column to specify the file name of each. So this all runs through and it's it's downloaded. You do have to prepare your data specifically for the TPU. It needs to be in TF records. And to do this, I created a couple of functions here that I that I use frequently for this kind of thing. This load images. This basically loads your entire image data set into RAM, assuming that it that it fits. If you're if it doesn't fit into RAM, you have to do some additional techniques. You need to basically use it as a data set and get some sort of a generator set up that's going to feed these images so that they don't need to happen kind of one one at a time. But this loads your images into a NumPy array. Basically, I create a array of the right size and then I just one by one read them in, scale them to whatever shape you specify. 
I assume that they are RGB. If you're dealing with grayscale, you'll, you'll need to change that a little bit. Then I process the training file. We put the file name in. We're going to just use the first 1000 images because really the purpose of this example is just showing how to get the TPU online. If you're dealing with big, big data, there's other much more complex techniques that you need to make use of where you're probably using an array of TPUs rather than just one like I'm doing here. So we load the images. Our X is the loaded images. Our Y is the training set. You need to create a data set from these, from the X and the Y. And if you're dealing with big, big data, you're just creating a, the data set in a different way so that the entire thing doesn't have to be resident at the same time. Similar to what we used the generators for before, where we use augmentation and theoretically we have infinitely sized data set. We do impose a batch size and it loads it in and we're we're ready to go on those. This code is specific to the tensor processing units. We attempt to get a TPU strategy if possible. If not, we just default to a to regular strategy. Strategies just specify how we're going to split this data set over the well, the training of this data set over multiple compute units. You also use strategies when you want to do multiple GPUs, which is not something I, I cover in in this course. I try to keep the course constrained to what you would have access in Google Colab or to a reasonably advanced machine that you would build yourself potentially. You can see that we have eight TPU cores. One TPU core does a lot more than the typical thousands of GPU cores that you'll see on a CUDA device. Then we create our model. This is exactly the same as how we did this when we were looking at convolution neural networks. No difference here, except that we use a strategy scope. So here we're basically, we're using ResNet 50 because that's a very good structure for learning this data set of paper clips that you're counting that I created. And we just create the model inside of the strategy scope. We compile it just like normal, and then we fit it. The main difference here between using TPUs and and other stuff that we had done is it has to be in a data set, which is really not a bad format to to have your training data in in any way. So this this is a decent, decent change. And then strategy scope, you have to use a strategy. If you're using multiple GPUs commonly, you're going to be using a strategy anyway. So this is not that extreme of additional stuff that you have to put in. Then you train it. You can see the RMSE dropping, 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 making full use of the TPU. And eventually it kind of plateaus right around there. And again, I'm, I'm reminding you that if you do happen to get this error, look at the authentication and make sure that you're properly authenticating. Thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested in more about Kira's deep learning artificial intelligence, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow along with this course. Thank you.